take the rock and we toss it in the back seat where it belongs. talked a little bit about how much moisture we've had tons kept us out of the field for I think we're on day 18 or 19 now and you can see like the conditions in which this seed has to pop through is really tough the ground is hard and there's like our corn trying to emerge so you can see that it's got to push all the way through you know and break off a huge clump of this mud just to get up you can see the one right there it's done the same thing right there there's another clump coming up and i bet if i pulled that up there's corn under it yep right there so not ideal it's just wet and it put a pretty good crust on this field all the fields so the emergence it's taking forever to come up and clearly it's uh having to fight through that crust just to get popped up so the good thing is no matter what that it's drying but I really thought after this past weekend of 70s and 80s that we'd see be able to row out a lot more corn than we are but that's not the case so I don't know what the long-term implications of that is or like the impact but I'm very curious to find out It's a big I can't believe nothing did break. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, that came up lower. We're just out here checking this field by the inlet and we're taking the field path up and we both just got rocked. My spine feels like it's shoved into my head, but we hit something very, very hard. And apparently it's a, uh, a critter has dug a hole in the field path and the front tire went right into it about, I mean, it had to be down to the frame of the hole. Oh, yeah. That hurt. Oh. I can't believe it didn't rip nothing off or off the front end of the truck or bend something for the suspension or rip the tire rod out. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Gary. Yeah, then. So are you busy today? You wanna come and uh, dig eighty, dig the eighty again? Ugh. Can't speak. Oh, over on, on Stebby's. Yep, Stebby's eighty, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna head out west and check Oscars and see if that needs to be redug too. Okay. Yeah, I can be out in about twenty minutes. That that should work. Okay. Um, um, see you later. Yep. Thanks, Gary. You bet. perks of having a retired guy doing your tillage. Yeah. That's for sure. here at our 80 and today we decided after 18 days of not being able to plant for continual rain Nick decided to send Gary back over here to do tillage on this field again to try to get it basically just flip it over and yeah try and dry it out better. turn it and dry it and it's only been what a few hours and yeah. I mean there's moisture in here but there's also dirt, and earlier it was hard pack and then straight mud after that. Yeah, exactly. Just crusted. So, I didn't think it was a good idea to flip it. Yeah, up. it sounds like it was the right call because this wasn't going to dry up like this. 
So now we're gonna go try to find a lower spot. Obviously this isn't exactly low. We're gonna go try to find a bad spot and see how muddy that is. We're actually wrapping up our day, which is weird. Um, barely filmed today, but we did do quite a bit. So um, basically where we're sitting is we've got what? like 600 a little over 600 acres planted and we have almost 300 more to go of corn we haven't planted in 18 days and that is literally because of water um we keep getting rain and rain and rain i would guess just spread out about perfect where you can't get in the field i would think we've got over six inches in the last three weeks but um, this past weekend we finally got 70, 80 degrees and things, a little break in the rain and things are starting to dry. So today we actually went out this morning, we checked some fields, um, we started over at our farthest east piece, the rented 55 acres on the inlet of Lake Chitek. That was actually the driest, it didn't seem like it needed to be turned over at all just to get it to dry out more. We went to my parents 80 that we farm and that was spotty um, so Nick made the decision to have the tillage tractor go over there and hit that with the field cultivator one more time flip that and it seems to have worked we've just got back from there and it's drying up nicely so nice enough where Nick's gonna go in the morning and start planting that um, then we went out to the farthest west piece right on uh, East Twin out there by Ruthen and Florence and that was better than the 80 that we checked before it but yet anything lower was pretty pretty wet so Nick decided after Gary went with the tillage tractor to our 80 to go out west and hit that so he's flipping that one over that'll be sitting until at least tomorrow night because um, Nick's going to go plant our 80 first. That'll take a couple hours or a few hours. Then he's going to run all the way over to east to the inlet. In the morning, Gary's going to go dig that right in front of him. It'll sit for a few hours. Nick will be behind him, plant that. And then the plan is to go all the way out west and hit that. I think there's about 135 acres out there. So anyway, lots going on. I took the rock wagon or the rock picker. So the 180 Magnum and the rock picker over to that east piece and picked rock ahead of him today. Um, we got the uh, seed tender started up and going, checked everything. Um, we haven't had to use it on the corn because everything is close to home and we get 230 to 250 acres per fill. So it's really worked out nicely where we've just been able to fill here, go, finish a field, come back, fill, go to another field. So anyway, this is ready for when we start beans. Um, what else? Oh, I dove into that stupid lawnmower more that the mice got into the wires. Got everything fixed except for we still can't get the PTO to engage. So we called and I think we're going to bring that up and just have someone at um, the dealership uh, look at that. It's either a relay or a switch it seems like. So anyway, um, big day tomorrow. We will be getting this 540 in the yield track planter out. And the goal is to finish corn tomorrow because after tomorrow they are saying Wednesday there's a 70% chance of rain again. So I think it's going to be a big push. We're going to try to get the corn in tomorrow. Uh, and then hopefully after that rain we're going to get the tillage ahead of the beans. We're going to roll some of the bean ground and then start planting it. Anyway, I think that's about all for today. Um, like I said, it was a lot of running around, checking things, picking rock, doing tillage, and um, should be set up well for tomorrow. So we'll see you back here tomorrow when we pick it up for planting. Well, it's the next day. Just about noon now. I waited quite a bit this morning to try and give it as much time as I could to let it dry up. And it's, it's still pretty, pretty tacky. I don't feel real great about planting into it. There's dust flying, but as soon as you scratch the surface, it's pretty wet. I've had to get out two times, and 
one time it, there was a rock in one of the closing wheels and it just packed with mud and then this time the packing, packing wheels uh, just had some mud on them because it went through a wet spot but we're planting, gotta beat the rain so everything's going good, I haven't had any issues with bulk fill or anything so yeah I got the Headlands of this field done. I got a little patch over there done. So I didn't fill, fill up with seed this morning just because I didn't. There wasn't enough room for a full box. So hopefully I can get this uh, 65 acres in and don't have to run home or call for seed. But yeah, going pretty well this morning, even though it is still a little wet. All right, we're out here. At the first 80 of the day, it's about noon. I had the job of lunch lady today, and I brought Nick something to eat quick, something to drink. And we got the main part of this field done. Now I'm gonna go in the pilot car here and go up the hill and watch for traffic. The uh, field approach on the top part of this field is directly on top of a hill totally blind so and in order to get there he's got to swerve way out into the other lane of traffic so just to be safe I'm gonna cruise up and get ahead of him and sit on top of the hill to make sure that no one comes over and meets him because I don't think that would end well for the person driving the vehicle or really anyone so yeah doing my pilot car duties and then he's mo moving to the next field I'm going home continue to work and we're gonna reconvene later um, it's got two more fields spread out 30 plus miles apart to do today yet and uh, I think we're gonna go back and fill the fill the planter completely full of seed before he heads out and um, just keep in touch if he needs more seed later and then I'm gonna run that out but I think we should be good so we'll see Nick just called me and he's right here and he asked me to come. He said there's a decent sized rock here. Oh yeah. So we're gonna pick that baby up. Perks of having really nice cars. I see another one here. I'm gonna make sure it's not too big. I don't know. I know we hit bigger rocks than that, but I'm right here, so might as well pick it up.
I'm back at the shed to gonna grab uh, what's mostly left of the corn seed that we have. It's just this this pro box and then all those bags. So I'm probably gonna split the pro box up in the in between the two tanks on the planter. And I'll probably throw a couple bags in right now, not a whole lot, just in case we, well, I know we're going to be have a little bit extra just because I have about 15 acres that I didn't get planted just because it was wet, but yeah, so that's my plan anyway. Hopefully I can be done before dark tonight. That'd be nice. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so that's kind of why why we're planting when it's not exactly the most fit, but curious to see how much is left in here. Shouldn't be too much. Well, about what I expected it to be. thing a little less. Oh. I don't think that's gonna work. What you guys are seeing is what I'm seeing. It's not the camera messing it up. what it's trying to tell me right now. I've never tried to run it from back here. Well, zero to zero. Alright, well, I'll put weight on the tank. Yep. After three years, that monitor is already gone to you know what like that and it's always been stored inside it's just outside when we're planning so I'd like to see it in five I'm guessing none of none of the letters will light up anymore on it all right so I've got the feed running in now I'm just gonna show you guys I took the weight of that pro box divided by two so that's what needs to be on the scale and that's when we're at half it's not a huge deal to be spot on with it but just at the end you might have to uh, uh, buck it back and forth to get them even so I'm gonna try and get it as close as I can with how the screen looks. Oh, I'm gonna call that good. I don't know if you guys can really read it, but 1270. Perfect. Oh, switched it around. Now we're doing the plus side. It's a decent drive, but not too terrible. Two o'clock now, so not doing too bad today, I don't think. We got some guys here putting in, they're running a Wi-Fi cable from my house out to the shed, so then we can have Wi-Fi out here. That'll be really nice to have done. 
I don't know if he'll get finished with it today, but they had to they had to trench a pipe in, and now he's trying to run the whole, the wires through the pipe. But yeah, a lot of stuff happening today, which is a good thing. Oh my God, it's got started on this field, and <laughs> it just looks like we're farming rocks at this point. This field is terrible with them, but. issues on row number one but uh, I don't know if that's if it's just the seats too big to fit through the hoses on the ends if it's trying to push too much I don't know I'm just gonna hop out and check everything over make sure everything looks good and nothing's packed with mud anything but they tell me just to do that every once in a while. Pushing really goofy. Yeah it definitely is pushing. It's not like packing it down right. Could it be this? So this last row, you can see if you look there, it definitely like pushed a trench different than the rest. And I think that rock there, which is about the size of a softball or so, must have been in the way. Nick thought we had it in the closing disc, but it's not. So he's dumping the manifold right now. this last pass he was just getting a, a lot of fluctuation in the bulk fill especially on that far outside unit typically he says that happens when uh, the manifold gets a little gunked up with debris and needs to be cleared out get air flowing good again
because I think you've been humming along nicely and you've had to stop twice in like the last round. So once for rock pushing and now what was it? Row 13 wasn't getting any seed. You. Yeah.